Morning guys and welcome to our final lesson for this week. Um, and your final math lesson, sorry I'm just checking that, I'm definitely recording. Um, well done for making it through this week. Now this is a final obviously week before half term and hopefully after half term it won't be too long till you guys are back. So just a few more uh, final push to get until we're back to school. Uh, in this lesson you will need a pencil or something to write with, your exercise book or something to write on and then a rubber or a ruler if you have them at home like always. Now, um, this lesson is going to be quite a short lesson, it's just a quick input from me, it's um, a recap on division using the bus stop method, I just wanted to make sure that you really, really understand it, um, it's a bit like with the times table lesson that we did at uh, the beginning of this week, the more you practice it, the better you get, and I know yesterday um, some of us were getting a little bit confused with the remainder, so there is the option to do a bit of division without remainders today as well, which hopefully might make some of you feel better and like I said it's just a final little practice for you before we move on to something else after half term. So like always we've got um, a starter on the screen here what I would like you to do is I'd like you to pause me here and then write the date in the Walt nice and neatly and then have a go at the starter. The starter is like the starter yesterday where you can use the bus stop to method to work this out if you want to but you don't actually have to because you can count in multiples of the smaller number until you get to the big number okay each of the big numbers are in are multiple of the smaller number, so you can work out the division that way. So pause me here and have a go. So if you've unpaused me, it's because you've had a go at the starter, and hopefully you got on okay. Um, let's quickly go through it together now. So first of all, we're figuring out how many threes go into 12. So let's do 3, 6, 9, 12. So you probably instantly knew that that was 4. So like I spoke about with division, if I had 12 sweets and I was sharing them between three friends, they would each get four sweets. Um, they would get four sweets each. Um, now let's see how many nines go into 36. I know that 36 is a multiple of nine. Nine, 18, 27, 36. So it's four again. Now 20 divided by five. Let's work out how many fives go into 20. Five, 10, 15, 20. Again, another multiple of four. Some of you probably don't even need to count in these multiples, you probably know them instantly, that's why it's really, really important that we work on our rapid recall, because it'd be great if you could say these straight away. For example, 36 divided by 6, I know that 6 times 6 is 36, so I know that 36 divided by 6 is going to be 6. So um, remember that multiplication is the inverse of division, so they both kind of go together, they're the opposite of each other. Now again with 55 divided by 5, I know that 5 times 11 is 55, so 55 divided by 5 will be 11. And then 28 divided by 7, um, obviously you're working out how many 7s go into 28. You might know straight away that that's 4, but if you need to count on your fingers, that's fine. Um, 7, 14, 21, 28, and there our answer is 4 again. Hopefully you got those right. If you didn't, maybe uh, just see where you've gone wrong. It might be just our times tables um, let us down a little bit. That's why it's really, really important that we practice our times tables to help us with our rapid recall. Now, let's have a quick recap of the bus stop. I'm just going to go through a few examples with you just to remind you how to do it. And then I'm going to let you get on and have a go yourself. Practice makes perfect with this kind of method. The more you do it, the better you get. So let's go through. Um, we'll start, obviously, with 654 divided by um, 6. So here it is in my bus stop method here. So first of all, I see how many 6s go into 6. Obviously, I knew that 1 6 goes into 6. Then I move on. How many sixes go into five? I know that five is too small, smaller than six. So I know that no sixes go into five and I've got to carry that five over to make it 54. And now I'm working out how many sixes go into 54. You might know that instantly, you can count with me. Six, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, and then 54. So you might have known instantly that 9 6s go into 54, um, but if not, don't worry if you have to count on your fingers. So that should be 109. So 654 divided by 6 is 109. Sorry about my rubbish writing. I've not got any better at this, have I? Now we're going to work out um, 237 divided by 5. Now this one wasn't um, much easier because it didn't have a remainder after. Like I said, for those of you that find remainders tricky, um, you've got the option to have a go at working this out without remainders when it comes to the task, okay? So let's start with how many fives go into two? We know that two is too small, so we cross him out and we're going to carry him over. So actually no fives go into two. Oh, that's going to be a zero. Um, now we're going to work out how many fives go into 23. I'm looking at 23 and I'm knowing it's not a multiple of five because it ends in a three. Multiple of five must end in a zero or a five. But let's see how close we can get. 
5, 10, 15, 20. Can't go to 25 because that's too far. So the closest we can get is to 20. So I 4 or 5 is going to 20, um, 23. But I have obviously my remainder of 3. Now looking at 37, I know again that's not a multiple of 5. So we're going to have a remainder on this question. But let's see how close we can get. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. I uh, can't go up to 40 because that's too big. Closest I can get is 7 lots of 5. But I've only managed to make it to 35 and I need to make it to 37. So obviously I have a remainder and of 2. So we put a little r and then 2. So 237 divided by 5 is 47. Remainder 2. Oops. Oh, that's meant to be an r. And there we are. Just as rubbish as before. Sorry, that's meant to be an r. Okay. So... What you're going to do now, if you're feeling confident with this, pause me here, have a go at all three or have a go at just one. If you're feeling slightly un um, unconfident still, um, you can do this alongside me. But like I keep saying to you, write it down and do it with me because that always makes you feel a little bit better when you do it alongside the person, okay, instead of just watching me. So let's start with 79 divided by 4. So I'm going to put 79 in my bus stop method here. And then I'm going to work this out. So I'm going to see how many fours go into seven. Like before, if you need to, you can draw out your dots. If you want to draw out seven dots, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you find it easier to work it out that way. Some people don't need to do this. Obviously, I want to work out how many fours go into seven. So look, there's one, two, three, four. Here's one group of four. Can I make another one? One, two, three. No, I can't. So I know that one group of four goes into seven. And I've got to carry over my remaining three. Some of you don't need to draw out those dots. Those dots are just for those people that need it a bit more vis visually. Now, I'm going to work out how many fours go into 39. I'm looking and I'm thinking 39 isn't a multiple of four, so it's likely to be a remainder on this question. So 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36. The rep next is 40. 40 is too big, so the closest I can get is nine fours that go into 39. We've made it to 36. So we've got a remain a remainder of three. So, because that's the difference between 36 and 39. So 79 divided by four is 19. Oops. Remainder three. If you had a go at that one, hopefully you got that one right. If you didn't, like I say, pause me here and have a look at maybe, maybe where you went wrong. Let's have a go at question number two. So, 339, oops, oh my word, I'm so rubbish at this, 339 divided by 4, so we'll start as we always do, how many 4s go into 3, we knew that 0 4s go into 3, because 3 is smaller than 4, and then we carry over our 3 to make it 33, now we're looking at how many 4s go into 33, so let's go 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, and 36. 36 is too much, so the closer we can get to is 32, so um, we can get eight fours, and then we have our one remaining. So we carry our one over here to make it 19. Now I'm looking at 19, and I'm knowing that's not a multiple of four, so we're going to have a remainder again. Let's see how close we can get. Four, eight, 12, 16. Next is 20, that's too far, so we can get four fours but we obviously we've only got 16 we need to get to 19 so we're going to have a remainder of 17 18 19 three you might be able to do that in your head without counting so 339 divided by um four is 84 remainder three hopefully you got that one correct if you had a go again if you didn't pause me here and see maybe where you went wrong um now, let's have a go at the final one, four digits, so slightly trickier this one, but the same rules apply. So 200, that's uh, 200, 2,484, and we're dividing that by nine. So like always, we start with the first number. Does nine go into two? No, it doesn't. So we cross him out, and we carry over the two and make it 24. Now, Let's see how many nines go into 24. 9, 18, or 27 would be next, but 27 is too far. So we can get to 18. So that's two nines. 
and then obviously we wanted to get um to 24 so we've got 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 we had six left over so we've got to carry that six across now we need to see how many nines go into 68 so 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, 63, 72, 72 is too far, so the closest we can get is to 7 nines. Now we only made it to 63 and we needed to make it to 68, so obviously we've got a few remaining, so let's see, uh, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, so we've got 5 left over. Now um, we're going to work out how many nines go into 54. Um, looking at 54 and it does look like a multiple of 9. Let's have a look. 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54. So we don't have any remainders on this one. Um, sorry, where am I? Um, uh, we had six nines made it into um, 54. So not, uh, 2,484 uh, divided by 9 is 270. So, hopefully you got those one correct. Um, if you didn't, like I said, just pause me and see maybe where you went wrong. Um, there was a mixture of remainders and ones without remainders there. What you're going to do is your task now. Because some people found remainders quite tricky, I've given you the option to choose A that's got no remainders. Um, and then B and C are a continuation of um, yesterday's work. That's why they both start at nine. I just wanted to give you guys a bit more time just to practice, to make sure we really, really understood this method before we move on. Um, like I said before, if you find it a little bit trickier, start with A, but then don't do anything that you're finding too easy. You do need to have a level of challenge, but not to the point where you're finding it too hard to do. So if you need to flip between a few of them, that's absolutely fine. Just make sure you tell me which questions you are doing. Now, this is really important. I've noticed this with some of your work um, when I've been marking it. It's really, really hard for me sometimes to see your answers. So please make sure you write out the number sentence of the question at the beginning. So you'd write number one, 45 divided by three, and then you do the bus stop method. Okay, so that's re and then it's easier for me to see your answer. And obviously, lay it out. that's exactly what we do in school. So obviously, I want to see you doing that at home as well. There is an option for a challenge. Now, B is the challenge that I gave you yesterday. I didn't notice anyone see anyone do the challenge yesterday, so that's why I've kept this in there. There is also an option of a C challenge. They are just word problems, and you're applying the bus stop method to answer these word problems. We did work on word problems on Tuesday, so use those skills that we went through on Tuesday, like circling the, uh, circling the key information and breaking the question down. So it'd be great to see you guys have a go at the challenge. Make sure you do write challenge as well, so I know that that's what it is. So you can pause me here and have a go at... Uh, the A, B, or C, and then when you're finished, have a go at maybe one or two of the challenges, see how you get on. Best of luck, um, well done for all your hard work this week, and um, have a great half term, um, and hopefully you guys are really starting to understand the bus stop method, which is fantastic.